Hi, and welcome to my capstone presentation. My name is Rex, and I'll be taking you through this project of mine, explaining what it does, what technologies are employed, key decisions made throughout this build, and finally, some future iterations I've got planned. First, a bit about myself. I'm an Army veteran, spending five years in the engineers, and that was my top branch choice. What led me there is essentially the same thing that led me here. I've always had a passion for putting the pieces together to create systems that solve problems. I love to build things, and while I was leading the Army, software struck me as a powerful way to do just that. I found this journey to be greatly rewarding, and I'm excited to keep going. This particular project, put together in a 10-day sprint, aims to solve a problem I run into often as a reader. If you ever looked up a word and find yourself looking it up again in the same book or in a different book, you're very much like me. But put the guilt aside, it's very difficult to learn something with a single exposure. As this graph suggests, each repeated exposure uh, adds some decay time. Your recall percentage is greater over time, which makes sense. Uh, one is able to build a working knowledge as you are exposed to that word or really anything more consistently. And so that connection is, is refreshed until it can withstand decay over time. And FlashWord aims to remove all the tedium of creating flashcards, allowing users to quickly look up a definition, create a card, and start learning words faster. So some technologies used to build this, I uh, used Django on the back end in Python. Django is great, especially for their admin dashboard, just being able to see data, put it in there, and make sure everything is looking right on, on the front end was hugely powerful. Um, it's especially powerful when uh, some of my endpoints weren't working as expected and I was able to just uh, get, get things going and data seeded correctly. Uh, I used React on the front end and that was some JavaScript. Uh, Google React charts to sort of package some data and present it to the user. I used Postman to test those Django endpoints. Again, that was a hugely useful tool just seeing uh, the, what, what endpoints were working, what, were not, what weren't and um, just being able to test through that. I used Bootstrap for some uh, user interface. And this was a, a key decision for me. Once I saw how you could use a Bootstrap component and customize it in a, in a way that one would like, it, it was really powerful for me. It allowed me to take these Bootstrap components, make them look how it wanted. And it saved me a ton of time creating things from scratch. So I'm very grateful for that tool. And lastly, Merriam-Webster. This is the API I use to uh, search for words, grab their definitions, and drop them into cards. Uh, again, another big design decision. Um, there are actually many, many words, um, excuse me, dictionary APIs out there. And what struck me about Merriam-Webster was it offered a short definition. And these short definitions are concise, small explanations of a word. Um, not so much concerned with the words etymology or you know how or where it was used over time, just a short, concise definition. And that was perfect for what I wanted for this app, just a, a simple, uh, simple definition dropped into a card quickly. And with that, I'll take you over to a live demo. So to save us some time, I've logged in a user, I've seeded some, some decks and those decks have words in them. And before I jump in, I just want to explain this back end a little bit, because while it's a simple interface, there's, there's quite a bit going on behind the scenes. So, of course, a user is logged in. They can create a deck, decks as many as they would like. Each deck has words. Each words have definitions. And this is show definition on some conditional CSS. And importantly, each word has a score. And on pushing these buttons, this score increases or decreases. Um, easy plus two, good plus one, minus one, minus two. And in accordance with that space repetition, uh, once a word reaches a certain score, I have it set to 10 right now, it can be argued that this, this word has been seen enough. This user has created a working knowledge of this word, potentially. They've, they've been exposed to it at least five times if they hit easy every time. And uh, it can comfortably be removed from the deck. And, and that's how it goes. So these words are scored. So let's test it out. I press easy here. And that's sent to the back end. Um, 
again, once a, a word is reaches a score of 10, it disappears. And on one goes. You cycle through the deck. And check your, your knowledge of each word. And there is full CRUD functionality of these decks. So users can add a deck. And you'll see this deck has zero cards due. And this, I think, is what really separates uh, FlashWord from a lot of flashcard apps. I've used several flashcard apps. And it tends to be the case that creating the cards is often a lot of work. There's a bunch of copy and pasting involved and uh, it, it can get tedious. So I was able to simply search word and you'll see that is now in the deck with a short, concise definition. And that's great. It, it, I think it meets the aim of creating uh, an application that while you're reading or before you're reading, you, you get a list of words, you create a working knowledge of those words, and you're not stuck uh, looking up a definition in the middle of a read. You, you're sort of focused on other things, perhaps the themes, uh, what your professor wants to glean from this, and so forth. Um, and lastly, I'll, I'll explain this chart down here. And this, this again, is a, a feature I'm very excited about. Um, with any app that I've ever used with any consistency, especially when it comes to learning, I find streak, streaks are hugely powerful. If, if I've got a five-day streak, I want to get to six, seven, eight, and so forth. And this is exactly what this is after. It's um, a Google React chart calendar. And each cell represents a day and it shows number of reviews per day. And that's each, uh, each time you click good, easy, hard again, and so forth. So I was able to grab data from the back end, package it, drop this in this chart. And this chart is doing a lot of the heavy lifting with the gradient and, and presenting this data. And I'm very grateful for that tool. But uh, yeah, I think it, it, it's trying to get after that that streak, streakify, you know, like wanting to keep going, to keep learning. And of course, average cards per day is uh, sort of after the same thing. You want to know your progress. You want to see how hard you're working or perhaps how, how hard you're not working. And, and that could be a motivating factor as well. So that is FlashWord. Um, I have several future iterations I'd, I'd want to go through. So I think it would be great if users can add notes onto words, perhaps the sentence they found it in or um, any other context they would like to put, words associated with it, um, th things like that. It would, it would add a, another feature to, to the learning experience and it would personalize it in such a way that I think a, a user would appreciate. Another iteration, um, right now, I do not have words reappearing after some time. And I think that's a mistake. I think it's, it's a little uh, prideful to say, you know, you've reached a score of 10, you know this word. I very much doubt that that's the case. So words should reappear. And um, I'd like to figure out a way for that to happen. And I'm already, I've already created some sort of framework around dates with this Google chart. And I think if I can put that date on a high level, and have it interact with each word and after uh, perhaps the score decrements after a certain amount of days and that word reappears just so you see it again so again getting after that spaced repetition so you keep seeing words you keep building that uh, working knowledge and you sort of um, extend that decay time next uh, i want to present the user with some options for definitions rather than just dropping them into a card I doubt that it would add very much time to show the user what's actually being dropped into that card. And perhaps they can modify that definition how they would like. Uh, if uh, Webster offers a few definitions, they should be able to choose and so forth. Um, like I said before, I think a streak is very powerful. Um, I would like to figure out a way to sort of count consecutive days here and drop that in a streak, just a simple counter a simple display above average cards per day. I think that would be really powerful for a user. 
Uh, next, sort of more ambitious is a stats page. Uh, I, I want to know which words are giving me the most trouble. Which have I mastered quickly? How many, uh, how many decks have I created? How many words have I seen overall? Things like that. And that, so you can track your progress over time, challenge friends, show them your progress, and so forth. And that brings me to my last iteration that I would like to do. Perhaps the most ambitious is the friends. I want to be able to share decks between friends. Um, decks could be read only or collaborative. And I think building that community could be, could be really powerful. Um, I just imagine like a book club or a class uh, getting ready for a read and you get all the difficult words out of the way. You learn what the words are, you're exposed to them. So again, when you're going through this read, you're not spending time nose in the dictionary. You're thinking about other things with that read. And that pretty much ties it up. Those are my future iterations. I'm sure as I've found, once you dive into this stuff, more things come up. So it, it'll be a, a work in progress, but uh, I hope you enjoyed it. Um, if you've got any questions, I'd be glad to answer them. Again, my name is Rex. Uh, this is Flashword and thank you.